Hi, I'm Chuck, and if you're watching this video, more than likely you are interested in drawing your filament or finding a way to print large spools of filament. So um, some of the searches might be for print dry or print dry 2.0 or large spools or large, large projects using a 3D printer. Um, it's very important, obviously, I'm sure you know by now, to make sure that if you're using a, a filament that um, is subject to moisture retention, that you have some way of drying it. But additionally, sometimes, you know, we're trying to print something big and we're gonna run out of filament and we, we, we wanna get a bigger roll. And there's not a heck of a lot out there on how to print with really big rolls. So I have, and I know you can make some of these at home, and I know I'll have some comments about some people that have made some, some print dryers at home, um, but I have two print dryers right now. I have the, the regular print dry, uh, which has been out for quite a while now, and I've had it for quite a while, and it actually works really well with small rolls, and as you can see, you can also put a second roll on top of a first roll, and that's actually pretty neat. The problem with this printer, with this print dry system, is when you put a big roll in there, you, you really can't print with it, because there's two, re for two primary reasons. One, the, um, the filament, when it comes out of a little hole right over here, then what will happen is it'll bind up against the side and you can't really print. The second thing that happens is this, the, the, sometimes the, um, the filament will come off the top uh, and bind up inside. And the third thing that happens is the print, the actual print rolls, the bigger ones, are so heavy that they'll push down on this aluminum plate and then it, the, the system just doesn't turn very well. So then I was reading about the Print Dry 2.0, and what was great about the Print Dry 2.0 was the fact that it said you could use it for large spools of filament, right? And that's great until I got it in. So when I got the, the Print Dry 2.0 in, this is pretty much how it came. It came with two stacks, that's it. And then on the inside of it, it came with a bunch of nice little stuff, which I quickly threw right into the box and stuff from the, the first Print Dry that I had, this little pump thing, obviously for pumping, uh, pumping one of these guys dry and it had some attachments okay so i looked at those uh some silica which is always useful and the big thing in here i was look, that I was looking for is how i could put a large roll of filament inside here now obviously you can um you know set up a spool here and that's what it came with was this this setup so i could do a spool in here or i could do a second spool in there and that's all it came with and then I looked into it, and then you had to buy a whole nother setup so you could add to this to make it a bigger setup to be able to print a large roll. And even then, what I found was it really wasn't gonna work well because of the rolls that I was using. Because just like every other person that does 3D printing that's out there, yes, I was using your typical spool of, of uh, printer filament for various different companies. These holes aren't always exactly the same. So they give you these they give you these little rubber attachments to go with the, um, uh, the print dry system with slightly different diameters on them so you can try to make them fit inside of this hole, right? And that'll work with this one. You can kind of squeeze in there a little bit. And if you, if you, when you have two of them on there and you tighten it down hard enough, it'll actually kind of work and it'll, well, it'll, it'll work actually pretty well. But what if you're trying to do something like this big. I mean, this is the big, I think it's called the Big Texas from Ziltech, Z-Y-L-T-E-C-H. And I have found for the money, this, and, and they haven't, I have not spoken to them at all about this, but I found for the money, this is actually one of the best filaments that's out there for the money. This roll is like 50 bucks, I think, for five kilograms of material for ABS. That's pretty awesome, okay? And the problem is that these holes don't fit. In fact, this is a, one that I've, I've got to start a project with. It has about 2.2 kilograms, so two over two spool, regular spools left of ABS on it. And as you can see, the hole on here is really, really small. So this won't fit in any direction at all. No matter, and if you squeeze in there, try to squeeze it uh, with, with a bolt on each side, well, that's not gonna work. But the, the print dry system doesn't come up with any way to to to, uh, uh, to bolt everything down. It comes it comes with these things, right? Which is supposed to somehow go through this hole, right? 
into this gigantic roll of filament and have no way of matching up unless you buy a bigger one of these somehow, okay? And even then, you still run into the same problem that these guys don't fit. And they don't always fit. Sometimes they do, but most of the time they don't. So my original solution was I went down and I got a dowel, right? A wood, just a simple wooden dowel. And this will work if those rubber things will fit in here. A rubber dowel will fit inside this and you can set it down and it'll work, okay? If you've got uh, the little rubber guys on here. But what I found was there was a lot of resistance on this, believe it or not, between coming out um, through the hole. And so I, I've had too much resistance and the... Um, the extruder kept pulling on the filament and getting snagged and not giving me smooth filaments. So think about that. If you have a lot of resistance on this and, kept, and, this, and the extruder keeps trying to pull on it, then it's gonna jam back on the extruder and you have these filaments that start kind of warping backwards on you, right? Or they're just not gonna be right, okay? So, What it ended up coming up with was very simple. Over at Ace Hardware, it got me a nice long piece of threaded steel, right? A long piece of thread that's uh, the exact width of one of these trays. And then what I did was I 3D printed my own insert to match the size of the hole. So what you need to do is just with a small amount of filament, figure out what your diameter is and print something that looks like this, all right? And then, so what that will do then is it'll slide onto this, this thread, go into the hole of the rubber insert that they have, okay? And then all you've got to do here is have a washer, washer and a, a nut. But in between the two, you need to have yourself a set of bearings. So 3D print yourself a piece of plastic that'll just, just fit inside here. It's not a tight fit, you know, it's, it's pretty snug. Um, then a set of bearings, which again, you can get at Ace Hardware, they're about $4 a piece, okay? And it'll fit it'll solidly inside here. And then a flat washer and then a nut. And then what will happen is you'll see that this guy then will slide perfectly through. Then what will happen is if you have a second of these, then what happens is same thing. You're able to slide it onto the other side. This guy, the threaded rod goes all the way through. You put on your flat washer and you run your, there you go. Run your uh, nut on, on each side of this. So now I actually have a good support. And then what happens is I can then take this guy and I can spin it. And it spins extremely well because of the, the nice bearings that I have inside of each one of the rubber stoppers that they have on here. So the rubber stoppers aren't supporting the large roll, right? The actual bearings are supporting the large roll, which means that now when the printer, the extruder pulls on this filament from up high or wherever and it pulls it, it's gonna roll. And it's gonna keep on rolling for a little while. In fact, sometimes it rolls so much that the filament can actually, if it stops suddenly, uh, the printer, it can actually make a piece come over the edge. So when the thing's full, when you have a large amount on there, you wanna make sure, and what's beautiful about this, is you can tighten these, you can tighten these down on each side and get yourself more resistance so it doesn't roll as much. You wanna tighten them, crank, crank down on them, then you can make it so it stops a little bit sooner, okay? So you have control on how loose you want this or how tight you want this, which is actually pretty cool. The next problem, of course, was how to make this thing fit inside of all of here because, you know, you've got your stuff that comes inside here, right? And then, but you only get two stacks. So how are you supposed to put, put this thing inside here? It doesn't fit inside here. It's just so big, it sticks out the top of it. So you have to get the third stack and then, when you go do put it in, you're stuck with one of these things that it comes with, right? So and so anyway, during COVID, I was trying to get hold of a third one of these stacks because I was like, all right, the thing comes in the mail. I open up, I'm all excited. I'm ready to print it out. And sure enough, it doesn't have a third stack. I'm like, what the heck? And I look online, I'm like, oh man, I got to buy something else for this thing too. I mean, I thought it came with everything because it was advertised as print large spools. But you couldn't. 
So what it did was it came up with the idea that I showed you with the threaded rod, which is easy enough. It's a couple of bucks over at Ace Hardware, 3D printed things, get yourself uh, uh, some bearings, which is already gonna work better. So now you got a perfect fit. And then I just went ahead and said, you know what? I got some extra white pet G laying around that I'm not gonna use. I might as well just design my own Infusion 360 and put this on Thingiverse for you. So you can find that on Thingiverse at the uh, spot below. So this actually fits and it'll lay right on top and insert automatically. Then what happens now is the big one, now that you got that all set, it will actually go down inside here, fit perfectly between the two uh, slots that it's got, you know, that the, the stand, stock one comes with. This guy can lay it on top of it. I can put my top on it. Heat it up, and when I'm ready, I can bring I can bring my filament out through the hole, right? So now you can see the difference in the resistance if you have one of these things. Is this guy is going to actually spin? It's going to spin quite well, and it's going to work real well for my printer. And now, once I load this thing in and I bring it and put it back up top, the configuration that I have for my printer is I found that putting it putting a shelf up above the printer. Um, and then running the filament down to the top of my printer obviously gives me the least amount of resistance. So I don't run it through any type of tubes at all. It comes right down through the surface, uh, which I cut some holes in it and 3D printed my own uh, windows, which I can put covers on if I want to, to regulate airflow. Um, and then it'll so it'll come right out, right down through the printer in for a big print. Um, additionally, one of the things that I found on this, if you do do this, is that it does work better on the lower of the holes, so you'll have the uh, spool going clockwise, in this direction, I'm looking at it anyway. So going clockwise, and the spool coming down through the lower hole. That gives you the least, uh, least amount of resistance on it versus going through the top hole. It will work only through the top hole, but it does get a little bit of resistance dragging on the bottom piece of the metal there. So you can see it's running along, and now the uh, printer can pull from a giant spool and the spool, the biggest spool that I can put in here, of course, is five kilograms, which is 11 pounds of material. And so by having it set up like this, what it does for you, it gives you the freedom to be able to set up a huge print, something that, that is gonna take up to 11 pounds of material. I mean, I can actually set up a print that normally would take a week or two weeks in some cases, and I have to come back like every day or day and a half and change out a new spool of material, right? And do that for a week and a half, when if I have some sort of great setup, then I can just leave town on like a, a motorcycle trip or a vacation with my family and check in with remote cameras and make sure everything's working fine. If your computer is set up correctly or you've got remotes like I do, um, I have Arlo cameras in mind so I can log in. Those are the easiest way to set up cameras because I can set them down in front of pieces and then I can uh, log in remotely to my computer. I can pause it or stop if I see something that's going on then that gives me the luxury and the freedom to go out of town. I was actually on, the, on a, a phone call with a big company that a lot of you guys probably have heard of before last year, asking them about, you know, how do I do, how do, I do something where I can just leave and set this thing up uh, for these giant prints? And the response I got from the technical support from one of the main guys was that just, just talking to somebody that does these large prints, he said, is quite impressive because they don't know how. I was just shocked that there really wasn't anybody doing large prints this size. So some of the prints that I'm doing are as much as 10, 12, 15 pounds of material, and I just don't want to be stuck here changing out, out a material roll every single day. So my default has been in the past to call my wife or train my nine, 10 year old daughter at the time to come in and change out the material. And then, um, you know, if I happen to be out of town and check on it, you know? So this gives you the freedom to be able to set up a large print. Your, your spouse will love you. Your friends will love you. So they don't have to run over and make sure everything's okay with your printer. And then you have the freedom and the luxury to do large prints, leave town, and not actually worry about it. I hope this video has been informative to you and helpful to you. 
If there's any other suggestions you have or comments or something else that you'd like to see in a large print, please let me know, put the comments in. Obviously, please like the video so others can share it. And please, uh, please feel free to follow me so that you can see more videos on how to do large prints or other solutions that I've come up with. Thank you very much and good printing.